Ready? Yep. Okay. Thanks, you guys, for coming. Um, Ben's been here twice now, and this is his first time spending the whole week in Jewel, and hopefully he had a good time. I had fun hanging out with him. Uh, he had a presentation last night in Cantrell for the other three communities from Seed, and it was um, wonderful. Everybody really seemed to get behind it and be excited about it, so I'm hoping you guys feel the same. Um, I'm not going to reintroduce Ben. I think most of you were here last time we um, met, so if you didn't get a chance to meet him before, I can introduce you later, but take it away, Ben. Great. All right. My little remote's not going to work, so I'm just going to sit here and kind of... Is that all right? You want me to do it? No, it's fine. It's fine. Um, and then that way, you'll we'll keep it casual that way. Um, how's everybody doing? Good. Good. Okay, so we're going to jump right in. I've got a lot of stuff to talk to you about. Last night, uh, I spoke for about 40 minutes and did not cover anything for Jewel. So um, I'm going to, to move a little bit faster tonight so that we can keep it right about the same time. The first thing that we had to really talk about was looking at the overall organization that's bringing these communities together. Because that organization is important to be able to leverage overall economic growth between all four communities. Realistically, you all need each other. And you need to be able to keep the money that is generated among those communities closer within those communities. And that's got some difficult challenges to it because Stratford is just as easy for them to go to Boone, right? Yeah, I'm making sure that I'm getting all my references right. Easier for Stratford to go to Boone or Webster City. And, and you know, folks in Jewel, it's, it's real easy to just shoot down to Ames. And every time we do that, instead of exploring the other options around, we're allowing that money to leave that economic ecosystem that exists here. So that is one of the main things that Hamilton County Seed was intended to help work on 21 years ago. Now, this is not a new organization. But after 21 years, people still don't know what it is, they don't know what it does, and they still ask if it's a seed company. So realistically, we feel like it's time to, to look at that and see if we can change that. So the other thing to understand is once you have, the thing that's interesting about seed is seed has a good reputation because it's done good work. So when you have an organization that does good work, you get other things that fall underneath its umbrella. And some of those things are the barn quilt program, tourism, and countywide economic development are now all associated either directly or tangentially to the, the seed program and its staff. So we have to figure out ways that we can connect and stitch all of those together. So with that, when we create a brand system, what we do is we focus on creating consistent elements that will help to tie things together. And the first place that I always like to start is with the colors. So what I did was I identified a six color palette. Now, as I always say, things show up brighter and more kind of fluorescent on the screen than in reality. So I am not suggesting that you use Dayglow orange or, you know, neon green for your colors. But as you look at these colors, you can kind of see, okay, we've got greens, we've got blues, and then we have two colors that come more from civic or people presence on the landscape. And believe it or not, what I did was, as I traveled throughout the county and I took photos all throughout the county, I went through and these colors are directly sampled out of those photos that I took. So there's a signature color that comes from each of the four communities and then two colors that came from photos in the rural areas that connect those communities. Now, why is that important? It's important because color can be used to connect the dots. And simply saying our color is green isn't good enough. And in addition to that, if you don't define what your colors are going to be, you end up making every decision in a vacuum. And I'm going to use Jewel as an example. So I picked up a brochure. It's been around for a while. What colors does it use? Red and white. 
Why? High school. If I see the gateway signs that lead into town, are they red and white? No, they're blue and gold. What color are the signs at the park? Green. What color does Jade use? Green. So that means that Jules' colors are blue, gold, red, white, and green. Not really. It just means that everything that we did, we kind of did in a vacuum. We designed it on the fly, and we designed it for looks, what looks good right there instead of having that continuity. So we're going to see if we can address that by using these, and it doesn't mean we never use all six of them at the same time. That would be crazy. It'd be too much action, too much cover. But we use clusters of them as we move throughout the communities. The next thing that we started to look at was the typeface. And we actually simplified the entire system down into three different typefaces. This first is called a script typeface. When you use scripts, you have to be very, very mindful of that. The scripts can be hard to read. They can be hard to, to uh, follow, but this is a very well done script. It's very legible, and you'll find that every time that it's used, it's either used in a signature word or it's used to deliver a tagline. That is the only two places that that script gets used. The second typeface is actually two versions of one typeface. This is called Nexa. No, it's called Trim. And the top is called Trend Slab, and the bottom is called Trend Sands. They're the same typeface. You can see the letters are very, very similar. But one of the things that's interesting about this is each one of the versions have five different options. So you have a lot of variety, and I'll point those varieties out as we go through. The other thing that's interesting about it is the entire typeface is only capital letters. Now, that's a good thing and a bad thing. Sometimes that makes things easier to read. Sometimes it makes things harder to read. But the thing that's interesting about this is, like, take the A, for example. Do you see how this A has a very sharp point to it? If I were to use a lowercase A instead of an uppercase A in this typeface, this A would have a rounded top. So it actually has variations of letters. And again, I'll kind of point that out as we go. So we have a primary script. We have this secondary typeface that allows for a tremendous amount of expansion. And then we have a third that we're calling the economic typeface. Whenever we get into economic development entities, we enter in this very contemporary sans serif typeface. So all of these together allow us essentially to have the wardrobe that we need. We've got our shorts and we got our suits. And it prepares us to be able to have the tools that we need to tell that story. So once we lay that graphic foundation together, I, I kind of spun back around. And I said, okay, name. What, what do we want to call this seed program? Seed started. I, I can guarantee you that who was involved with actually naming it seed? Was anybody in the room there? One of the teachers at school and our students. Okay. So... I'm going to guess, because it was a competition, wasn't it? That I'm going to guess that what they did was they decided that they wanted the word to be SEED, and then they decided to turn SEED into an acronym. You guys like acronyms. There are a lot of acronyms. Um, there was this new effort recently to create a countywide promotion committee. So it was going to have Jewel, Ellsworth, Stanhope, and Stratford. And guess what it was going to be named? Jess. J-E-S-S. Jewel, Ellsworth, Stanhope, Stratford. Okay. But realistically, you know, having something that means something, having something that's clear, concise, and having something that makes the communities proud to be part of it, and makes potential communities excited about the potential of being a part of it. And what I finally landed on was the concept of <coughs> Hamilton hometowns. It creates a logical connection between <coughs> these communities. We clearly denote in the primary logo that we're an Iowa Main Street community, an Iowa Main Street program. But we also 
very much graphically tied to our agricultural roots. We also have this very simple graphic at the top that symbolizes the radiation of energy, the sense that there's a new day, there's a new horizon, and there's energy making things happen. Now, in addition to that, you also have this opportunity to bring in different elements and this tagline that we're recommending, Deeply Rooted. Deeply Rooted talks about the connection that you have with your land and also the connections that people have with one another. Once you get here, you become connected to this place. And this is a quality statement that ties together all of the communities. It is a value that all four communities share. So it's a statement that they all can, can use together. So then the next thing that I do is I go through and I evaluate and make sure that the identity system works. Now I'll tell you, with logo design, what happens a lot of the times if you get a group of people together to design a logo, what do they focus on? They don't care about the typeface. They don't care about the colors. First thing they jump to is the pictures. What's our logo going to be? We've got to have a tractor because we got farmers. And we love football. And, you know, you see those water towers all around, so we maybe we'll just put a water tower in. And the next thing you know, it's like, wait, somebody will say, well, we are Hamilton County, so we should put an outline of the county on there. And then, oh, we could put stars where every community is. And then next thing you know, instead of having a logo, you've drawn a map. And realistically, nobody knows, unless you live here, what the shape of Hamilton County is. So that is not actually helpful. What we're trying to do here is we are trying to create a graphic representation that you all can make mean something. Every time we put this down, it starts to earn additional meaning with whatever photos we couple it with, with whatever, whatever stories we share. So you can see we tested it out in what we call reverse. We test it out in different color options, one color, blue, simplifying it down. As you move across the screen, the simpler it gets, the better it works when it's very small. We also cleaned up and made a version that could be very, very small. We're showing how you can take this icon and grow it and adapt it to highlight the four communities. And because of the way that this radiates out and the way that the, the segments are, let's say that Camrar decided that they were going to join up. We're just sectioning it up. Just keep sectioning it up. Hopefully one day we'll have to figure out a new icon because we've got too many communities to highlight. And then even over on the side, simply showing a simplified version of an iconic H with that, that graphic tied to it. What these things do is these give us very clear options for social media icons so we can consistently have the same look over and over. Now, if Hamilton County seed is going to transition over to become Hamilton hometowns, we still have this overarching task of economic development on that, the countywide level. So what we're showing is we're showing a clean, simple economic development logo that can act as an umbrella for all of these ED organizations in each of the communities. This allows for a simple logo that will be able to allow the economic development efforts in Hamilton County to exist right alongside the peers of that industry. There are not a lot of people in economic development that are focusing in on true community capacity building the way that Hamilton County Seed does. But it is our belief that that is the single best economic development strategy for Hamilton County. So what we're doing by introducing these together is we're cementing the connection for capacity building in communities as a economic development growth strategy. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay. So all of a sudden, we talked about all those different programs that got associated with SEED, and now once you have this design foundation, you can easily start to tie those in. Hamilton County Barn Quilts Program. You know, right now there's a Hamilton County Tourism logo. And it kind of looks like a wave. It almost looks like a movie strip, film strip, with all these different activities on it. That goes like this. <coughs> and it said, let the good times roll. Because the logo goes like that. Because, 
you know, one of the things that really struck me as I drove around the, the county was the rolling hills of, wait, no, I didn't see the rolling hills yet. Um, you know, realistically, from a tourism standpoint, tourism is an industry that people have been kind of confused on for a while. When you have a tourism entity, nobody cares that it's called Hamilton County Tourism. That is simply an organizational designation. What we care about is getting people to come experience Hamilton County and spend their money and leave money behind. So this, this concept of visit Hamilton County, Iowa, instead of Hamilton County Tourism, this allows you a way in a very simple graphic element to be able to make the tourism sell while using that signature script to tie in to what we're doing with the hometown program. So once you have this foundation on the countywide level, you begin to be able to see the way that things work for the individual communities. And I'm going to go through these quick because I know that you all, the one you really care about is Jewel, but it's good to be able to see what each community is being able to, to work with. So obviously with Stanhope, we wanted to stick with the imagery of the watermelon. This evokes a quality of life that, that they are proud of. This tagline, a slice of the good life, it is a really, really great message. They have not made it work for them. They haven't done anything with it. They've stuck it on a building and stuck it on a sign and stopped there. So being able to show them how they can take it and grow it and make it mean more. So once you have this logo, again, the same thing, going through, testing the system, making sure that it works. We actually, we showed this to them last night. They came up, we revised some things. They wanted to incorporate one that had an established date on it. So they have an option that says Iowa, have an option that says established 1883, and then they have a cleaner version that can be used smaller. Now, if it just stopped there, then we wouldn't really be, we're only at two levels. We're at a county-wide level and a community-wide level. It's got to make its way down into the events. So what we looked at is we looked at showing them how you can take that design aesthetic, we can roll it down to things like the community garage sale, watermelon day, Wednesday night at the park. Now, these all look very, very similar. If that community garage sale tag wants to be blue, that's fine. You know, if you want to change some things up, that's fine. But I wanted to show them and hammer home the point that as you, and I'm going to be blunt here, and I hope that I don't offend anybody, but if you go around and you talk to general citizens in Stanhope and you say, what's going on in Stanhope? The answer is nothing. And then you say, well, do you like it here? And some people might say, this town stinks. That's what we're fighting with. So connecting these events and having them contribute positive experiences back in to the community brand is essential to earning brand equity. Because these are the things that all connect into quality of life. And what we typically do as community members is if I volunteer for this event, I want to make sure that this event looks different from any other event going on in town. I want to set my event apart from every other event. That's the natural tendency. So we're going to have to work with our event organizers to be able to have them understand that collaborating together is very powerful. And then again, Stanhope also has an economic development group called Stanhope Development Group Incorporated. So when we get over to that ED side, we're able to go with that clean image that fits together with the economic development efforts. Now, of course, we jump to Ellsworth. Um, Ellsworth, if you go into their website right now, they use a lot of blues and they use a tagline and a move, on the move. On the move. Okay. Well, what is on the move reference? On the move could reference the fact that people drive right by them every day on the highway or could reference the fact that a lot of people in town are packing up and moving away. We understand the sentiment behind what they were trying to say. So what we wanted to do was take that and evolve it a little. So again, using that same foundation, we create this new version for them. 
We changed that logo, that tagline to always growing, always moving. This concept of movement was something that I really wanted to give them the opportunity for moving to have two meanings. <laughs> moving forward and emotionally moving. Being able to have that depth to that statement was something that was really important for them. And realistically, they have a perception problem because of what you can see if you don't know anything about the community. You have to work to know that there's even a historic core there because of the physical structure. So being able to entice people, and it's kind of funny, when, um, when that icon on the top showed up, there were some folks from Ellsworth that were like, oh, I really like that. I really like that. That kind of reminds me of a wind turbine. It's like, okay, that's what it reminds you of? That's great. Other people were like, it kind of reminds me of a sunrise. I like that, that kind of energy. Of that sun. That's what it reminds you of? That's great. I also like the fact that it kind of reminds me of a turkey tail. <laughs> and that's connected to who they are too. Being able to have icons that are simple enough that people can have multiple interpretations. This is not about being so literal that you're one and only one thing. It's about having this ability for your graphic identity to mean something as you do something. A logo has never fixed somebody's problems. But a logo can help you to tell your story. So again, with Ellsworth, we go through, we see the different color options there. Um, I always tried to tie into things that you already had invested in as communities, colors that you might have invested in or concepts. Now, one of the things that was interesting in Ellsworth was they have put a lot of their eggs in the industrial park basket. But when you drive by, that industrial park has no sign. You don't know who owns it. You don't know who did it. You don't know who deserves credit for it. So being able to help solidify their economic development efforts was really important for Ellsworth. So we started with the Ellsworth Development Corporation. We wanted to create something there that was very fresh. Because of their, pre their proximity to the interstate, they are able to make a true value proposition for manufacturing because they have easy access. You are three hours from Minneapolis, St. Paul, you are one hour from Des Moines. You have really easy access for manufacturing. And Granite City Brewing is a great example of that. You have the opportunity because of proximity to be able to change the way that certain businesses operate. And there is no other brewery out there that is doing a partial brew process, then putting it on a truck, shipping it to a restaurant, finishing the brewing process, and calling it brewed on site. So your access to the transportation network allowed them to do that. So that ED group then kind of moves into the Ellsworth Industrial Park, and we took that tagline and we, we spun it a little. Growing business, moving product. So you take that concept and you just adapt it so it fits in with their industrial effort. they got this new group called the Eagles that are trying to do some things around the community. Then they also have the long-standing community club. So what I did there was I simply took that icon and I flipped it, made two sides, and make it look like two C's, community club. Amazingly clever. Not really. It's simple, but it all creates a connection. Now we jump over to Stratford. I told them last night, I'm like, you know, this is the first time that I have ever seen a Scandinavian community named all after English names. <laughs> It's a very, very interesting dynamic. So um, what we did was I landed on wanting to use an Old English script that tied into that because it is very interesting and unexpected to see a street grid and a an, and name network that's based off of, of that kind of origin. But I also knew we could not, we did not want to do the whole name that way. It is very difficult to work with. So I took the Old English S and turned it into an icon. So to start with, we simply have that overarching brand identity. And we talked with them a lot last night. Stratford has a unique challenge. 
because of their position right on the edge of Boone County, they are the hardest of the four Hamilton hometowns to be able to justify just going out and, and kind of bringing in. They're the most remote from the others, and they... But the, the weird thing is they've got a lot of new business. They opened four new businesses last year, two new businesses this year. They've got a new restaurant that's open for dinner. Those are the kind of things that we need to celebrate and help share. So we talked last night about tagline for them. I knew that from a tagline standpoint, I needed to give them something that invited people back. And it was actually kind of cool, the discussion that happened. And, and this phrase, come home again, was something that they're really kind of talking about using. And they like the fact that it ties in to the Hamilton hometown's idea. So we're going to continue to play around with that. Again, their organizations. They've got um, the SCDC, which we're going to change the name on that. That kind of came out loud and clear. After seeing this, they're like, we need something better for that. Stratford Promotion Committee, I suggested the, a name change there. They didn't like that, so we got to figure out what we're going to do with that. Um, and then finally, Stratford Stride. Stratford Stride used to be the JCs, and I'm going to probably have to fight a little bit with them because they feel like all the pride is deposited in orange and black. Other people in the community are like, orange and black, the school doesn't even use orange and black anymore. And every other group is using blues. Blues all over our website and that kind of stuff. So that's going to be fun. We're going to work through that. But realistically, we've got some good movement there. You have that design foundation, and then you can see how that makes its way over into the events that they hold and, and creating that consistent look and feel. All right. So then we move into Jewel. Now, you're the largest community, and you've also made the most progress. You've been working at this for decades, and you come in and you see a place that has been able to experience and, and kind of make change for yourself. And I think that... One of the things I noticed first, I already talked a little bit about the inconsistent use of color, but then I also saw very consistent use and connection to anything that made the reference to Jim, Precious, you know, any of those connections between your name and a gemstone. And I think that that is completely and totally spot on. We just need to solidify it. We need to make it mean something. And in the meeting on Monday night, we talked a little bit about phrases and, and thoughts, and honestly, Fred nailed it. Um, this idea of living up to our name. It is both a proud statement and an ongoing challenge. Now, I want you to know you've got a tagline now on your welcome signs that is a gem in a friendly setting. Okay? Again, nothing wrong with that. <coughs> that me? Sorry, y'all. That was my university calling to ask if I'll donate money for um, the Alumni Association. You can tell that's the only person that ever calls from that area code. Um, so that, that gem in a friendly setting, that's a great statement. Okay, that's, there's nothing wrong with that. And the last thing in the world that I'm saying is it needs to go away. I do want you to have something that helps to capitalize and, and wrap your arms around the momentum you have created while also capturing that self-challenge. We are not done and we need to keep moving forward. So when we apply that to Jewel, looking something a little like this, okay? I took that gem, I, I created one. We're going to be able to use this one gem for any time we need a gem. Um, you can see with, with the banner here 
what I actually did was I designed it a little bit different. I, I kind of had some of these sharp edges like a gemstone would have, the, the facets that you might see, so that it feels a little bit different than just a standard banner might. And being able to have this option to have historic added above it or not. That's a, the, every single one won't say historic jewel, but you've got that option put in there. This is created in a way where you can easily take and add things or remove things to the logo system. Every single one won't have the tagline. Every single one might not have Iowa. It all depends on where you need to use it. So again, you have this very, very strong, and honestly, I, I made a decision and I think I need to explain the decision. Um, I had two main colors that I felt like I needed to decide from. I didn't put a whole lot of weight into the blue and gold of the welcome signs. The welcome signs are extremely attractive. They look good. But I also felt like they were something that were kind of designed during the task of needing to design welcome signs. So I felt like the big thing that I had was I had Jade, which had established a lot of momentum around the greens, and I had the school colors. And when it got right down to it, the decision that I made was the school is South Hamilton. Red and white are the colors of the collective, and you do not need to take that pride and make it Jules pride. So I made a conscious decision to actually separate the two instead of taking it and trying to make the school pride work for you. And and I, I, I've got to say, some people might not agree with that, but my expert opinion is this is the right way to go. It gives you something to make yours because you've got a track record to back it up. Now, with that, you've seen this kind of establishment from the community or destination identity, but being able to take that same icon and have it work in that clean economic development and organizational standpoint. Now, the thing that you have going here is kind of interesting because you have Jade and you have Jade Foundation. And there are two groups they're two different kinds of nonprofits, and they focus on two different kinds of people. So this is Jade. This is the 501c6. This is the one that businesses or organization are, are members of. Okay, and one of the things that this organization needs to do for next week's test run on um, on Main Street assessment is have a mission and vision statement. So since I'm so unbelievably helpful, I wrote a mission and vision statement for you guys. And I'm going to read those real quick, all right? Mission statement. To secure downtown Jewel as the premier destination and place to call home through innovative and strategic promotion, event and business planning for the purpose of preserving the historic landscape of our downtown, as well as sustaining a healthy economic stage for our community's economic growth, okay? This is... A, if you've ever had to write a mission statement before, it is the ultimate act of diplomacy. It is like, let's find all the big words that make us sound very smart and holistic in our view. Then you move over to this vision statement, and that's kind of looking forward to the goal. Vision statement to cultivate a fully revitalized downtown, one that incorporates walkability, <coughs> cultural activity, recreation, rest, relaxation, and entertainment while supporting a thriving business, restaurant, and retail environment, which is essential in preserving our buildings and our community. These are not rocket science. These are not intended to make you cry when you read them, but they simply lay down those parameters of what the group is supposed to do. But when you move into Jade Foundation, I'm going to make some assumptions. I'm going to make some assumptions that Jade started first. And that Jade started humming, Jade started to do some stuff, and then they realized, you know what, from a strategic standpoint, we really need a secondary entity that makes us eligible for grant money. 
we need to be able to perform the functions of both a 501c6 and a 501c3. So that was where Jade Foundation was born. And realistically, one of the things that I noticed through that name is by the time Jade Foundation was born, Jade was already a brand. Jade used to stand for Jewel Area Development Enterprise. And once it became Jade Foundation, it was Jade. Jade was an, it was an energy, it was a momentum, it was a movement, it was something moving forward. So I actually took a different spin and I took that script and brought it into the Jade name. I also went and changed the cut of the stone. Now the reason I did this is because realistically, Nobody in the community has the time nor the inclination to do the research for themselves to determine the difference between Jade and Jade Foundation. It just doesn't matter to them. Um, they know that there is a group that's doing good things, and they know that they want to support that group. And it's up to us to figure out how to make that work and, and make it nice and clean and seamless. But this just gives a little bit of difference in the graphic identities. It, it really kind of helps to, to reinforce the fact that if we are going to truly treat these as two different entities, we need to have a little separation in their identities. Now, from there, we move into some of the things like business collateral. And um, one of the things that ended up on my table at some point, I'm not sure whether you, somebody left them, um, was a couple of, of Jade business cards. And was that Bruce? Oh, was it Mel? So, you know, having that kind of stuff is exactly right. And then also, whenever you have a member-based organization, one of the things that you might want to do is an annual window decal so people can kind of show that support. So here what we see is how those cards might look with this new brand implemented being able to have that window decal, being able to have that kind of simple standard business card that you can kind of hand out. Um, and then also taking something like this that you all have. I mean, this is, when this was printed, I, I'm guessing that this has got a little bit of age on it, but it's got all the businesses inside listed. And, and realistically, um, I think that if you all were to see a list of all the businesses in the community, it would probably be longer than you thought it was. So there's a lot of value to something like this. And I'm simply showing where you could redesign that to be able to highlight that. And these type brochures, believe it or not, the cost of printing these has gone down a lot. They're a lot more affordable. The thing that you have to know is how many do we actually need. The other thing that ha you have to know is any time you print a directory of businesses, it is out of date the moment you send it to the printer. So do not order 10,000 of these. Figure out the quantity that's right, and then figure out a way that you can keep it up to date. And hopefully we can also have the website work in conjunction to help with keeping that business directory. Now, one of the other things that we did for you guys is we went through your requirements to qualify as a Main Street program. Because when you qualify for Main Street program, you qualify for state level grant funding that can potentially help this momentum to continue to move forward. And one of the things that, one of the sections that, that Jewel is lacking on is the section that directly relates to historic preservation and the efforts that you all make towards historic preservation. Now, that's not a knock on you all at all. There are two things that really stick out. One is a requirement to be able to have a program that helps to supply money to people who want to do projects. But there's a stipulation on that. You do that. That's the hard part is giving away money. The easy part is making sure that the money goes towards something that becomes a positive contribution from a design standpoint in your downtown. Now, that sounds harder than it really is. So that can be a place that the organization can quickly and easily change. But the second part was simply doing some sort of activity 
at the very least once a year that highlights preservation efforts. So that's what got my mind rolling. And what I decided that what I'd like to recommend to you all today is a new event. This event would not necessarily need to be a regular event, but it would simply be an event that highlights opportunities for preservation in the community. And that event will be called Hidden Gems, Historic Preservation in Plain Sight. This event can be unbelievably simple. It can be as simple as providing a Hidden Gems tour of the upstairs of the Longhorn. It can be as simple as teaching a class on restoring wood sash windows. It can be as simple as doing instruction on tuck pointing brick. This can be any number of things, but the thing that, that Main Street wants to see communities do is empower their citizens and their private sector to continue to invest in buildings. Again, you all have done the hard part of this. We just got to be able to do some of the easy part to kind of get the check marks. So, you know, being able to kind of promote those events, do posters for that, kind of show off the, the details, have people take the opportunity to take a second and look up. Another thing that I'd love to see you all do is to create a pocket folder. You've got a lot of different things going on. It, you do not need to go through and create and spend a lot of money on developing economic development pieces and all that kind of stuff. Things move quick here. And you just need a way to hold everything in a professional package. Now, pocket folders used to be extremely expensive. Nowadays, you can order 250 custom printed pocket folders for $250. That is cheaper than you pay for folders at the office supply store. So you just got to figure out a way you can get about 250 bucks together. But, you know, what I'm calling it is I'm calling it a development guide. As it goes to print, we might decide we don't want to call it that. We might decide we want to keep it, you know, even simpler than that. But being able to have a place where you can pull all the resources together, you have got retail market leakage reports from the State Main Street program. That is extremely detailed information. That is the exact same information that a national retailer uses when they start researching where they would locate. So being able to put that together along with having a message directly from the mayor and council, inviting people to search out opportunities. Maybe you print out sheets with available properties, shovel-ready sites, things like that. So what you start to see is you start to see a family of pieces that help to tell Jules' story. Now, as we come around the bend, we start to see a connection between all these different economic development groups and this economic development umbrella. But then we also see a connection between all of these destinations and this overarching Hamilton hometowns. Now, a couple other things that I just want to go through quickly. One, some of these are going to bounce around a little. Um, there is definitely the need to have a brochure on the Hamilton hometowns level, being able to share all the businesses in the communities. Now, realistically, there's some businesses that might not be quite, and I, I hate to say it this way, but you know, if you are doing a piece that is oriented at um, a visitor, they don't necessarily need to know uh, plumbers, propane companies. They need to know restaurants and shops and places they can leave their money behind. Um, if you find that a lot of people are coming to Hamilton County to, to visit and buy propane, put propane in there. You know, that's, that's completely, you know, it's a, a learning game. Being able to go through and promote different events with posters that look professional being able to catch people's eye and bring them in. Signage is something that's really, really important. And one of the things that I would love to see is I would love to see a countywide wayfinding signage system that has, on this right-hand side, we see what's called a trailblazer sign. 
These trailblazers could be all throughout the county, helping to denote destinations and how, how far you are from those. Now, one of the things that I would love about this is, you know, a lot of times with DOT signs, they'll have a destination, they'll have a mile number, and that's it. One of the things you could think about here is you could think about having minutes, this many minutes away, something like that. Just being able to show that, believe it or not, all of these communities are a lot closer than you might think they are. And in addition to that, if you're coming to visit Hamilton County, the destination, the journey is part of the destination. Being able to drive those roads, being able to see that landscape. To someone that does not live in a place like Iowa, I have been able to be immersed in this picturesque setting as I have driven from community to community. So driving from Stratford all the way to Jewel is not a task. It is part of the experience. So here we see these continuous trailblazer signs. And then over on the left-hand side, we're seeing signs that would appear once you get into the community. Far left, you're seeing what we call a pole-mounted gateway sign. Every single community announces arrival at the corporate limits. And then the communication stops. So being able to welcome them again once they actually enter what feels like the core of downtown and, and announce that arrival. Um, every single community has had not really had much of a parking problem. We, we, I told them last night, my goal is for in five years, every community to have a parking problem. We want you guys to have enough traffic that people truly start complaining about it being hard to park. That is a good problem to have. And then finally, we also see banners. Street banners are extremely important. You have a very nice street banner here in Jewel. Um, I, as I was going around, I noticed that there is appears to be one remaining Jewel banner with a, a locomotive on it right in front of the pharmacy. Um, banners can do some very interesting things. They slow traffic down. If you have continuous presence of banners and you have banners that are bold and, and kind of not busy, they slow down the traffic. They also help people to know where they are and they help people to know things that they might be missing out on. So, you know, if you had a place where people parked here in town, you might actually put banners around that area highlighting the lake highlighting amenities close by that they might not know about or see if they didn't if they didn't already have that information. So we kind of show the trailblazers stay consistent and as we enter into the communities they change over to be customized for each one of those communities. The banners can change, the welcome signs can change, the background colors of the signage can change. Um, and again being able to introduce that unique sense of character while also having a consistent platform to speak from. And then again, being able to have that. I do not over-design the banners. It is very, very easy to over-design these because you're designing them off of a white screen. But you have to remember, they perform a function in the landscape. They're going to have business signs competing with them. They're going to have building architecture. They're going to have traffic. So you want to have them provide a sense of calm and confidence and continuity as you look down. The thing that I would ask you to look at when you leave tonight is when you walk out front, just look down the street, look at all the poles that you have, and think about, and, and you've had them before. I mean, it's not that's not a new concept to you all, but... Being able to set that tone. And as time goes on, you can do more and more things with those. You can, you can highlight events with them. Technology has gotten to the point where you can print cheap banners to highlight an event. And they're actually disposable. So you print a banner that only lives for a month. And uh, instead of paying you know $100 for a banner like you might have, you might be able to get one for $15. And if you incorporate a sponsor onto it, then, then you know, they might pay for it themselves. Um, so, again, having all that, being able to have a 
countywide guide that brings together all the communities and shares information about what everybody's working on. Being able to use the concept of Hamilton hometowns to leverage the amenities and momentum of all four communities into a true sense of direction for the region. And then finally, I just wanted to end on some ads for Jewel itself. Being able to show off some of the images that I was able to capture and, and being able to kind of talk about this sentiment and this confidence of what you all have to offer. Whether it is being able to own the lake like you do, whether it is showing off some of the details in the community, whether it is highlighting the just the, the restored storefronts. I have to tell you, you see this stuff every day. Um, I have communities all over the country that would kill to have the building stock and have the people who have cared to invest in that building stock. And the thing that you have to do is you have to share the excitement. It is a shame that some of the buildings that you guys have have been restored and sat empty as long as they have. Because it is a cool place with cool people. But business is different now. So being able to set a tone for the kind of person and the kind of family, the kind of quality of life that are going to attract people is going to help you to move yourself forward. I just, I love, I love gravy. I love what they have done in terms of, I mean, realistically, I don't, I'm not trying to highlight any one business, but gravy is the type of business that indicates to people like me that there is a movement happening in a community. They're a signal that a place is turning cool, even if it is by accident. And accidental cool is some of the best kind of cool. Because it, it's not orchestrated. It's not planned. It's not puppeted. It happens completely organically, and it happens your way. Um, but being able to kind of highlight that, I think, is something that's always really good. Um I shot this this morning out at the lake. I mean, you know, those amenities that you have literally, I mean, it takes me less time to drive from a cabin at a lake into downtown than it takes me to drive two blocks in my hometown. So, you know, those are the kind of things that are important to share those are the kind of things that you need to have to be able to boost the morale of your citizens. And, and people here are going to be skeptical of the process. They're going to be skeptical of the progress, especially the older generation that watched the decline. Because what they're going to say is they're going to say, this community will never be like it was. And our answer to them is, you're exactly right. But the future that it has can be absolutely amazing. And I'm excited about seeing the jewel that you've never seen. I'm excited about seeing the jewel that we've yet to uncover. And that is the kind of message that you all need to be able to share. Share with your friends, share with your neighbors, because realistically, the thing that we've learned in this process is the folks outside of Jewel have a better sense and a better thought of Jewel than some of the folks in Jewel do. We're hearing stories of other people in Hamilton County saying, I need to sell my house so I can move to Jewel. That's pretty cool. It's a good thing to have. It is easier for outsiders to feel good about a place than it is for insiders too. I always tell folks, it's, I've got a 1967 Mustang. It was my first car. I know every single wreck it's had. I remember every single time it's broken down and left me stranded. And it takes constant money, constant investment, and constant hard work. 
But I take that thing out on weekends to cruise ends, and I show other people that car. And they walk up and they say, oh, your car is beautiful. And that is why I do something so crazy, like keep work on it and keep putting money in it. I need other people to tell me that it's beautiful. I need to be reminded from the outsider's point of view. Because when I'm at that cruise in, everybody's car looks better than mine. Because I know all the hard work. I know all the things I haven't done yet. So we need to be reminded of that outsider's point of view. And the thing that you need to remember is you guys have a true American classic in Jewel, Iowa. I understand that people like to hop in the car and drive to the newest Walmart Supercenter. But the thing I can guarantee you is in 15 years, that's going to be a 15-year-old Walmart and you're still going to have an American classic. So you've done great work. You've done fantastic things. You've got a lot of momentum for a community your size. You should be proud of where you are. And, um, and I'm excited to see what you all do in the future. <coughs> With that, I managed to keep it right at it's 7 o'clock on the dot by my clock. Um, I'd like to open it up for your thoughts, your comments. Did you see and do you understand the overall strategy? Do the thoughts make sense? Um, and do you feel like with some refinement and some tweaking and that kind of thing, this could be a system that you could really get behind?